Channel 3. Good evening, everyone. We are at the height of All-Star Mania. The actual game will not be played until tomorrow, but there's plenty going on today to keep fans busy. Gil Tyree joins us now with some of the highlights of the myriad activities that's out there. It's a great time for the Valley. I'll tell you, if you're a hoop junkie, you got to love it because the bouncy <laughs> well ball was going everywhere. The 45th Annual All-Star Saturday is in the book. Sellout crowd was on hand inside America West Arena tonight to watch the rookie game, the long-distance shootout, and the slam dunk competition, and the million-dollar shot first it was a rookie game, and you descend down on great, beautiful shots of America West Arena. Cotton Fitzsimmons coached the white team to an 83-79 victory. Wesley Person scored 13, and Cotton had to love every minute of it. But it was Lamont Murray's lay-in that won it for the white team in overtime. Great dish from Glenn Big Dog Robinson. Long-distance shootout competition. Suns Dan Marley eliminated in the first round. Only eight points, and uh, really thinking about tomorrow, the All-Star game. The bet won by... The Miami Heat's Glenn Rice. It was definitely the heat of the night. Rice beat out Indiana's Reggie Miller for the competition. You could also say, like I said, it was a heat of the night. Slam dunk competition. That is a defending champ. Minnesota's Isaiah Ryder. Oh, my goodness. But it was Harold Miner of Miami giving the Heat their second trophy. He wins for the second time in three years. He best rider, an outstanding effort for him. And also tonight, the Foot Locker Million Dollar Shot will we'll let you know in sports what happened to Ohio's Mike Hoban, who attempted the shot. Now, while the fans enjoy the action on the court, security and medical personnel are trying to deal with the massive crowds off the court. Our Michael Haggerty gives us a live indication of that with more downtown. Mike, what's up? Well, you know, Gil, the AWA seats fewer than 20,000 people, so you may think, well, how bad can the crowds be? Thing is, there's a party going on on just about every block for five blocks, any direction of the AWA. Over 100,000 people are coming down here every day of the NBA All-Star Weekend, and the medical teams, uh, teams rather, need to get the quickest response possible. Phoenix has had police officers on bicycles for several years, but this All-Star Weekend, the bike force includes paramedics from the Phoenix Fire Department. For special events where there's large crowds, we can get to the patients a lot quicker on bicycles than we can with our engines or even our rescue trucks. Arnie Barajas is a Phoenix Fire Captain heading up tonight's bike patrol. We're ready for anything. We're ready for anything from uh, a bruised knee to uh, a major incident like a cardiac problem or any other type of uh, injury that might require advanced life support. How is that possible? Well, the secret is in these saddlebags, which put the tools needed for first response treatment right behind the pedaling paramedics. We have tiny little oxygen cylinders that are able to support a patient uh, until our field units get on the scene. The bike bags even hold a heart monitor. So you can carry all these things. Look at the, I mean, that's amazing that you've got that on a bicycle. Yeah, it uh, took a lot of designing, but we're able to have uh, bags custom made so they can carry all of our equipment. And uh, obviously, we don't have the quantity that we do on our regular engines, but we have enough to stabilize the patient until our fuel units get on the scene to continue uh, stab uh, patient stabilization. Now, the fire department has been doing this for a couple of years, but Frank and Jana, on nothing like the kind of scale they're doing here, they've got, as you saw, their half a dozen or more guys out on the street tonight until 11. They'll have them back out there again tomorrow to get through the crowds to the people who might need the help. Okay, Michael, did, did, was that a Phoenix Fire Department design, that bag? The Phoenix Fire Department had the bags designed to their specifications. I don't know whether it was somebody actually on staff who did it or not. That is amazing that yeah. they can get all that packed in there. Okay, thanks, Michael. The NBA announced today that Phoenix shattered the previous attendance record for the All-Star Weekend's jam session. But the high demand for tickets didn't please too many Valley fans. Thousands of fans with tickets were turned away at the doors after the event reached capacity today. But this evening, the NBA has announced that unused tickets from today's event will be honored tomorrow. Just 2,500 tickets are available to the public to purchase for tomorrow's event. Activities all start at 10 a.m. sharp. The All-Star Game itself begins about 4.30. The All-Star Game draws big names, and tonight, Reverend Jesse Jackson is in our town for the event. But today, a group asked him to boycott that game. Jackson spoke to an audience still outraged by last summer's death of Edward Mallett, a double amputee who died after police restrained him in a controversial neck hole. The Reverend responded with outrage to Mallet's death and says he wants to meet with city officials. 
I mean, the chokehold is, is, is a murderous hole. Police shouldn't kill people. They should help people and communicate with people. That is not, that is not, that's not their role. And, and the chokehold should be eliminated altogether. Jackson says he'll join a Valley Youth Organization in a protest before attending the All-Star Game tomorrow. Today, the Reverend also visited juvenile offenders and says he hopes talking to them will keep them from going back to jail. In other news tonight, a 10-year-old boy is rescued from the top of Squaw Peak tonight. The youngster fell while hiking the mountain and broke his leg. Phoenix Fire Crews helped bring the boy down. He was taken by helicopter to John C. Lincoln Hospital. His name has not been released. Air Force officers still don't know what caused the collision that caused a fighter jet to go down yesterday. Officers from the other Air Force bases will investigate the crash at Luke Air Force Base, which occurred yesterday. Earlier today, the jet's pilot, Lieutenant Charles Durfrey, was released from the hospital after spending the night for observation. Doctors say he will be okay. Jurors in the O.J. Simpson case will tour the murder scene in Simpson's estate tomorrow. But family members of Nicole Brown Simpson say they don't want the defendant in sight. Simpson is allowed to tag along with the jurors on the tour since it is a trial proceeding. And just to make sure jurors don't see anything they're not supposed to see, Judge Lance Ito made a dry run. He toured the Simpson's estate and the crime scene yesterday. In California, two pit bulls escape from a yard and maul at least four people, leaving them with bites all over their arms, legs, and backs. Not even a bullet could stop this dog from attacking. Police officers shot the animal, but it kept on attacking. Officers finally cornered it and brought it to the Humane Society for observation. The other dog is back with his owner tonight. The White House is downplaying the latest revelation about the new Surgeon General nominee. In a 1976 medical journal, Dr. Henry Foster wrote that he had performed some hysterectomies to sterilize severely retarded women. The White House administration says it knew that fact before Foster was nominated and that the nominee no longer considers that procedure to be appropriate. Foster first came under fire after admitting he had performed abortions. It's been less than two months since a deadly shooting in a Boston abortion clinic, but today protesters were back at it, staging their first large-scale demonstration since those shootings. Dozens of protesters gathered outside the clinic. The group says it plans to demonstrate there every month. President Clinton is vowing to put his veto pen to work as Republicans attempt to dismantle his crime bill. Earlier today, the president said he will veto any bill that stops his plan of placing 100,000 police officers on the streets. I made a commitment, a promise, to put 100,000 more police on our streets because there is simply no better crime-fighting tool to be found. And I intend to keep that promise. And another city is trying to do its part to fight crime. Cleveland, Ohio, is cranking down on the sale of toy guns. The proposed measure would require a person to be 21 years or older to buy a toy gun, and then they would be required to paint the gun a fluorescent color. All of this in order to help police identify what's real and what's fake. In the world tonight, a horrible reminder that racism is still prevalent. Two men pleaded guilty today to spraying more than 50 black people with Kool-Aid from a high-powered fire extinguisher. The men face up to a year in prison and fines of $100,000 each. An animal rights protest in Belgium turns violent as demonstrators are hauled away to jail. Police arrested 24 protesters who broke through barricades trying to stop a ship from unloading sheep and calves. And the space shuttle Discovery returns to Earth. The Discovery landed at Florida's Kennedy Space Center early this morning after spending eight days in space. Astronauts say their highlight was coming within 37 feet of the Russian space station. For those chocolate lovers not watching their caloric intake, we have a special Valentine treat for you. It's an all-you-can-eat chocolate bar out at the Arizona Biltmore. This sinfully rich buffet is here each Saturday during the month of February at the price of $12 per person, including coffee or tea. The Biltmore cordially invites you and your special someone to indulge yourself. At Kiwanis Park tonight, it was strictly ballroom. See how well dads keep up with the younger generation on the dance floor. But first, a chilly day on the green, or should we say on the white? Find out why these golfers didn't let the winter weather get them down. I've been waiting for this. We all have. Here 
he comes. Southwest Airlines introduces new service to Omaha for just $89. Just book seven days in advance. And we'd like to remind you, Southwest never serves airline food. What could be better than winning a million? How about giving away a billion? Hi, everybody. I'm Jim Howell, inviting you to help the Arizona Lottery celebrate reaching $1 billion in prize payouts on Billion Dollar Thursday, February 16th. Just come on down to the Lottery headquarters between 6 in the morning and 2 p.m. on that day and register to win lots of great prizes, including a cruise to Bermuda with Sir Charles and friends. Be a part of Billion Dollar Thursday. Call the Arizona Lottery for more information. I Masters has a really big offer right now. All frames are 50% off. Even their best designer frames are half off. All frames are 50% off at iMasters. Smitty started in Arizona over 30 years ago with a simple idea. Give people more for their money. And today, our simple idea is still working. That's why you get big savings in our warehouse district and drugstore. Now in Smitty's restaurants, get our Bell Ringer dinner special, an 8-ounce top sirloin steak for just $4.99, and kids eat free from 4 to 9. And you know, we're going to keep on giving you more for your money for years to come. Smitty's, a supermarket, a drugstore, and a whole lot more. My Fuddruckers burger is a half pound. Yummy. Lots of dab of mayo and, and tomatoes with a big small dollop of salsa with my Ooh, it's heaven gone. Who makes the world's greatest hamburger? Fuddruckers and you. $32 Eternity for Men purchase at Dillard's. The snow didn't stop these Cleveland golfers from playing their game. The Chili Open Golf Classic lured dozens of golfers out in the cold. The temperature only reached 20 degrees and the wind chill made it feel like it was minus 20. Golfers say the hardest part of this game was locating their balls in the snow. Last weekend was the beginning of the Flagstaff Winterfest, and this weekend, it's going to the dogs. One of Winterfest's biggest crowd pleasers is the dog sled competition. This year, a record 62 dog sled teams are entered in the race. The races will continue through tomorrow afternoon. I know a lot of folks down here are worried that we're going to have a rainy All-Star weekend. We've been lucky we so far. So. Yeah, it looks like the timing of this whole thing is really going to work out well for us. We may see some rain, but the earliest will be Tuesday. Good. Good, though. You can't uh, beat that at all. Uh, we will see some cooling temperatures slowly the next few days and some breezy conditions. In fact, it was a bit breezy around the state today. Uh, peak wind gust up at Flagstaff was 26 miles per hour and at Winslow, 40 miles per hour. And it'll be breezy tomorrow as well. We have a temperature of 58 degrees at the airport. The relative humidity at 55%. The winds are calm. The barometer's rising and the dew point is at 42 degrees. On the records page... It was back in 1951, we had a high of 83. Back in 1933, a low of 26. Our normals are 71 and 44 today. We were at 68 after morning low of 47 degrees. Here's the way we warmed up across the state. Flagstaff up to 42, Sedona 56, 54 in Prescott, in Coolidge 72 and 56 this afternoon in Bisbee. Around the nation, temperatures uh, warmed up like this. Not, they didn't warm up much, though, I must say, in the Great Lakes. Still below zero in the afternoon hours in International Falls. 14 is what they got up to in Chicago. 22 in Detroit, 44 in Atlanta. Uh, not too bad down in Jacksonville this afternoon. They'll be a bit colder tomorrow. They were at 75 there today and 82 in Miami. 69 in Houston and 50 in the Dallas-Fort Worth area. Now tomorrow, temperatures should turn out like this. Very cold across most of the U.S. because that... Frigid Arctic air is moving out of Canada. It actually came over the North Pole, 
moved down out of Canada and now is sagging across really the entire country from west to east. And we are even going to feel a little bit of this cooler air, but nothing like they have seen back east at all. With temperatures tomorrow remaining in the single digits for much of the northern tier and teens for the Great Lakes states. As far as what's happening tonight, frontal system uh, now through central Florida, stretching back through Texas. Heavy rain today along the southern portion of this front in Atlanta, 4 to 5 inches in some spots. Heavy snows up to 20 inches in the UP of Michigan and blowing winds causing problems with uh, drifting snow. So blizzard conditions in some of these uh, eastern, uh, some of these eastern states, specifically around the Great Lakes. Now as far as we are concerned, we have this front poised to our north. It's going to move on down and uh, kind of cool us off a bit. Oh, I wanted to point out some temperatures quickly. These are from last hour. And they were down to zero in the Twin Cities, two in Chicago, two in Detroit, and in Cleveland, six degrees, five in Indianapolis, and even Louisville at 16 degrees. Okay, as far as we are concerned, for this evening, looking pretty nice, and tomorrow looking nice as well. We do expect to see some action come Monday with increasing clouds and then possibly some rain come Tuesday. And this is probably going to the, be the culprit right here, this disturbance northeast of the Hawaiian Islands. We expect it to kind of move in along the um, subtropical jet. We'll see the jet start to come north a little bit, bringing more moisture into the state. And then we're also expecting another disturbance to rotate down along this huge trough of low pressure. So all those things combined will probably produce showers maybe as early as Monday night snow showers in the high country and probably throughout the day on Tuesday. High temperatures for tomorrow should turn out like this with Flagstaff at 42, Payson 54 and 59 in Globe, 69 in Coolidge. Let's go ahead and take a look at your forecast then for tonight. We're expecting mostly clear skies, 48 down to 35 in some of the Cooler Valley spots. On into tomorrow, mostly sunny, breezy and 67. Monday, Increasing clouds, breezy at times, possibly some showers by Monday night. Chance of showers in on Tuesday, 60 for a high. Decreasing showers on Wednesday and mostly sunny on Thursday. And boy, I'm breathing a sigh of relief after all this. I was worried about this weekend, so I'm glad that initially we were wrong, dead wrong. Good. Now we can showcase so we. our town. Mm -hmm. okay. Thanks, Sam. Mm -hmm. Medieval fun returns to the valley this weekend. In the foothills of the Superstition Mountains, the Renaissance Festival comes alive. Knights, damsels, and hundreds of other costumed folks invite you to recreate a European street fair. The festival will continue here in the valley through March 26th. Well, this is every bookworm's dream. Take a look at this. Hundreds of thousands of used books, all at the VNSA annual book sale. And you can't beat the prices. Paperbacks are going for as low as 20 cents a book, while bestseller hardbacks cost you just a couple of bucks. All funds raised today at the sale benefit local charities. And if you miss today's sale, you can still shop tomorrow. The sale runs from 9 in the morning to 4 in the afternoon out at the Arizona State Fairgrounds. Someday at their weddings, they'll dance with their fathers to the song, Daddy's Little Girl. So tonight, these little girls are getting an early start teaching Dad all the right steps. A look at a special sweetheart dance tonight only. How would you like to win free groceries? You can by watching Oprah five days a week right here on 3. First, write your name, address, and phone number on a postcard and mail it to Channel 3. Then, beginning Monday, Jim Howe will draw a postcard sometime during the Oprah Winfrey Show. If your name is drawn, just call us within one hour to claim your prize. $200 of free groceries from Fry's. A grand prize winner will fly from Phoenix to Chicago to see Oprah live. Watch and win with Oprah, weekdays at 3 on 3. Why I like Iron Kid's bread. I just like the taste of white bread. He loves white bread. I like wheat bread. I only like white. I can hear now. Iron Kid's bread has many important nutrients, so it's nutritious. If she's happy, I'm happy. And with Iron Kid's bread, we don't argue about what to eat. I buy it, I eat it. Iron Kid's has the taste kids love. Because all the fiber of whole wheat bread. The bread parents and kids can agree on. Steve, how can one phone line do the work of two? I don't know. How can you prioritize your incoming calls? I don't know. Ask me something about plumbing. Don't worry, Steve. The small business group at U.S. West is here to handle your phones. And now during our free installation proclamation, we're installing lots of products free. Call us to find out which ones can help your business. After all, you know plumbing. And we know phones. The small business group at U.S. West. I've been waiting for this. 
we all have. Here it comes. Southwest Airlines introduces new service to Omaha for just $89. Just book seven days in advance. And we'd like to remind you, Southwest never serves airline food. The jobs of tomorrow are here. Thousands of them waiting to be filled. But you have to know the fields they're in, and you have to have what it takes to master those fields. Because you can't get the jobs of tomorrow until you get the skills of today. Start by calling ITT Technical Institute. We'll send you an informative brochure on tomorrow's careers and what it takes to get them. Call 1-800-942-0088. Here's a quick recap of tonight's winning Powerball numbers. There you see them on the screen. 4, 14, 15, 28, 44. The Powerball number is 17. And in the Arizona Lotto drawing, here's another look at those numbers. 13, 20, 5, 18, 38, and 36. Good luck to all you lottery players out there. Valentine's Day is no longer a day reserved just for sweethearts. There are now cards and presents available for parents, grandparents, even your favorite teacher. And with that in mind, tonight, the city of Tempe held a special Valentine's dance for daddies and daughters. It was a night for dancing, corsages, and boutonnieres, ruffled socks and patent leather shoes. It's a Valentine's dance for dads and daughters. She's been looking forward to this ever since we signed up. It's really important that we get together because I put in a lot of hours doing our dress. Marie went out shopping with mom today to get a new dress. So it was, it's been a special day all around. Dance organizers say the idea was so popular, they were sold out of spaces on the dance floor weeks in advance. It's a really good time for dads and daughters, especially this day and age when we have a lot of um, one-parent families where dads don't get to spend a lot of time with the daughters, or their dads may have jobs like as policemen or firemen where they're on call a lot of time, and this is a really good time for them to, you know, spend some time just by themselves. A lot of the daughters showed dear old dad a few new steps. Some seem to catch on, others, well, it's a matter of opinion. Is, is dad a pretty good dancer? A real good dancer? What did you say? And although this is a night for dads and daughters, a few moms did show up to serve refreshments. Most said you couldn't keep them away. When I first saw them lined up outside and they were all dressed up with their flowers and stuff, I was just trying to hold back the tears because you just kind of remember it's a special moment. It's wonderful. Because after all, as the saying goes, a son's a son until he takes a wife, but a daughter's a daughter all of your life. They sure That's are. great stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah sure, sure. Yeah, That's I can detest to that. Daddy's little girl. Yeah, I mm -hmm. got two of them. Mm -hmm. I gorgeous. got one. So. They're gorgeous. That's I have right. one. <laughs> <laughs> that makes what? Two, mm -hmm. one, four, four of them. Quick math, right? Yeah. Uh, Dan Marley. <laughs> Dan Marley uh, struggled a little bit. Yeah, he did. Yeah. Maybe the trade on the possible trade. Well, his possibly, mind? and also thinking ahead to tomorrow. You know, you don't want to show too much because uh, you know he'll have a good game tomorrow, All Star game, but. Dan Marley and the guys got to the floor. All-Star Saturday. Did Isaiah Ryder repeat? Well, the answer forthcoming. Late night sports on this All-Star weekend in Phoenix. Don't you go to bed with. Play Wheel of Fortune, weeknights at 7.30 on 3. For years, AT&T's television commercials convinced my mom, my sister, and me not to join MCI savings programs. Then we heard about MCI's new friends and family, and we decided to try it. So we joined together. Now, when we spend just $10 a month, we save 50% on all the calls we make to each other. That's half of what we used to pay on AT&T's basic rate for the same call. And now we realize that all the time AT&T was telling us not to join MCI, they were charging us America's highest long-distance rate. This is going to be a blast. Can't wait. Go for it. Wow, look at all these kids. Hey, come on. 
Gatsko Nationals, February 16th through the 19th. Firebird International Raceway, Chandler, Arizona. Tickets at Dillard's. She had a great time. Hi, Art Piccinati for Scottsdale Nissan, Arizona's new low price leader, where volume discount pricing guarantees you the lowest possible price on thousands of new Nissans. This week only, brand new 95 Altimas, only $99 a month. That's right, 95 Altimas, only $99 a month. With the highest trade-in values of the year, we'll pay off your trade no matter how much you owe, and no credit application will be refused. Scottsdale Nissan, two blocks south of McDowell on Scottsdale Road. More of the 99 reasons to wake up with Beth and Bill. Reason number 33. If your brain doesn't work too well in the morning, no problem. Neither do ours. You know, I never got that one. It's okay, Bill. Reason number 34. As soon as we polish off a few donuts, we're pretty darn funny. Which brings me to reason number 35. You have to wake up anyway, right? So why not wake up with a smile? Watch for more of our 99 reasons. Or better yet, just listen to 99.9 FM. You might come up with reasons of your own. You mean there's more? Hoops, hoops, and Ooh. more hoops. Mm -hmm. That's right, I'm a hoop holic tonight. Hoop We're going to get it done. We need tonight <laughs> every day. <laughs> World Capital of Basketball, Phoenix, right now. We got a lot going on, ASU and Stanford. And big basketball game there, ASU baseball, playing uh, the second-ranked Seminoles of Florida State in baseball. And, of course, a big story here, the All-Star Weekend, 45th Annual. Tomorrow, the All-Star Game, but tonight was the real fun stuff. The rookie game, three-point shootout contest, and the always entertaining slam dunk contest. It all started tonight. Things got started with the rookie game, the green versus the white. The Suns' Wesley Person and Trevor Ruffin represented Phoenix. Person scored 13, five of nine from the field, and it took this lane in overtime by Milwaukee's Glenn Big Dog Robinson to help the Cotton Fitzsimmons coached white team get the victory 83 to 79. I just enjoyed the game. It was a fun game. I had a good group of guys. They played hard all the time, and it was just a fun game. And I had a good time with it. They had a good time, and, and everybody got a chance to do his thing. It meant a lot to me. Uh, I wanted to go out and have a, have a uh, good performance in front of my, my uh, home fans, and, and I, I don't dread one minute. At the half of the rookie game, the Foot Locker Million Dollar shot bombed out. Ohio's Mike Holman, who appeared a little nervous, missed the rim. Totally. The stunned crowd and everybody here. And whereas Hoban missed the mark, so did his tutor, Dan Marley. Thunder Dan eliminated in the first round of the long distance shootout, scoring just eight points. The event was won by the Miami Heat's Glenn Rice. Rice beat out Indiana's Reggie Miller. It was definitely confidence. Uh, I really and honestly truly believed that if I got on any kind of rhythm that I could uh, walk away the champion. And, I think uh, the first time that I got in this uh, three-point shootout, I had uh, made a promise to myself that if I ever got in it again, I was going to be the champion. The final event, the popular slam dunk competition, a snore of a competition this year. The Heat score big again. It's Harold Miner winning for the second time in three years. He beat out the defending champ, the T-Wolves, Isaiah Ryder. You know, tonight I just wanted to come out and have some fun you know, uh, showcase my abilities, but, you know, I'm, I'm a lot more than, than just a slam dunker. Um, I can do a lot of things. Uh, it's just a matter of getting a chance to do it. And, of course, the All-Star game is tomorrow, 4.30, the tip time. The buzz going around the valley, and tonight, a trade possibility between the Bulls and Suns. Scottie Pippen wants out of Chicago and admits he would love to go to the Suns. And it should, could, and may happen. Most likely for the Suns, Dan Marley, Wesley Person, and a slew of first-round picks. Charles Barkley and Pippen earlier today joking around, could they possibly be teammates? The two could end up together if the bo both these teams pull off a blockbuster deal. Without Danny Manning, it could be a key move for the Suns' chances at a world title. I think they look at my value that they want to really uh, turn the franchise around and make, you know, something good come out in the works for the franchise and not just for me. If you had a choice, Phoenix, that Top of my list. He's the one who said he'd like to come here and he'd like to play for Phoenix and sounds like a wonderful idea, but uh, it's, it's easier said than done. Okay, stay tuned. Jerry Colangelo, always one who will pull the trigger on a deal and just stay tuned. The Devils were in action this afternoon facing the Stanford Cardinal. Let's go to the UAC for this one. And it was a great ball game. First half, Ice, Burst, Ice Burton will bag the three-pointer. 7-6 ASU. 
Isaac Burton led ASU with 19. Huge crowd on hand, and everybody loved every minute of it. James Bacon inside the great dish from Mario Bennett. James Bacon, 11 points. 28-24 uh, ASU at the break. Stanford comes back. Dion Cross a three. He led Stanford with 20. Bill Frieder concern, but it would be Rio. Down low, 13 points, 10 bounds. ASU, like I said, led. And in the second half, the Devil D comes alive. Oh, look at him frantically going after the basketball, the hands, and causing that the turnover. Quincy Brew on the finish, and Mike Montgomery a little upset. The Devils go on 79-70 over Stanford this afternoon, 18 and five on the year for Frieder and company. Uh, they were not going to give us anything. Stanford will not beat themselves. You have, if you're going to beat Stanford, you have to beat them yourself. They're not going to beat themselves. For any W in the Pac-10 is good for us, you know, because we're trying to stay, you know, up there with U of A and UCLA and top of the Pac-10. So this sweep of the, the Bay Area School is real good for us. Okay, let's run down your top 10 scoreboard in college basketball tonight, Oklahoma.